फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर् चानल ओम साई भोजन पल्ली Stop talking. Two more sums is left out in this portfolio beta. We'll complete that and discuss about the next concept called as levered beta and unlevered beta, which also leads us to another related concept called as proxy beta. Today we'll be doing these three areas: levered and unlevered beta, as well as the proxy beta. Next class, we'll start with the sharp single index model, another very important area in this portfolio theories. Let us summarize what has been discussed before I proceed further. We saw that to value any asset, we require discount rate. Value of an asset is the present value of the future benefit discounted at required rate of return. So in that case, the discount rate or required return depends on the risk of the asset. Two things we need to understand: how to measure a risk for a given level of risk, how much return one should expect. These are the two issues one should understand. Above that only the chapter is mainly discussing. Discount rate discovery is the objective of this chapter. So we divided the chapter into six segments. Risk return profile, Markowitz portfolio theory, capital asset pricing model, sharp single index model, arbitrage pricing theory, and efficient market hypothesis. Risk return profile we completed. Return of a security is some generally measured as percentage, which is year end price minus year beginning price plus dividend divided by year beginning price. We call it as holding period return, and the risk of the security is the standard deviation. When we say return from a security, we understand it as an expected return, which is average return. We don't expect extremes; we generally expect only average. How the actual returns deviates from the average, we call as the standard deviation. More the standard deviation, more risk, and vice versa. So standard deviation of a security is equal to square root of sigma x minus x power the whole square divided by n. When there is probability, square root of sigma p into x minus x power the whole square. How a single security can have a risk and return? So to a portfolio. So the return of a portfolio is the weighted average return of the individual security. But risk of the portfolio is not equal to the weighted average risk. It is given by the formula W1 square sigma x square plus W2 square sigma y square plus 2 W1 W2 sigma x sigma y correlation of x and y square root for a two security portfolio. For three security portfolio, W1 square sigma x square plus W2 square sigma y square plus W3 square sigma z square plus 2 W1 W2 sigma x sigma y correlation of x and y. Plus 2 W1 W3 sigma x sigma z correlation of x and z plus 2 W2 W3 sigma y sigma z correlation of y and z square root. Like that, when we have a n security portfolio, we'll be having n square terms, n variance, n into n minus one covariance terms. Here, the security, the portfolio risk depends on three aspects: risk of individual securities, their proportion, and the co-movement. The co-movement only represented by correlation. They can range from minus one to plus one. Minus one correlation is called as perfect negative, and then plus one is called perfect positive. When correlation is plus one, sigma p is equal to W1 sigma x plus W2 sigma y. Correlation minus one means sigma p is equal to W1 sigma x minus W2 sigma y. 
then when correlation is minus 1, we can even reduce others to 0. So the proportion of x is equal to sigma y by sigma x plus sigma y and proportion of y is equal to sigma x by sigma x plus sigma y. Then we saw correlation calculation, so covariance of x and y divided by sigma x into sigma y. Covariance is nothing but sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar by n. When you have probability, sigma p into x minus x bar into y minus y bar. Then we discuss about Markowitz. I don't want to summarize that. Markowitz gave you the efficiency frontier of risky asset. Then we combine the risky asset with risk-free asset and found out the capital allocation line. In that, if you assume that all investors have same expectation, other assumption, then capital allocation line becomes capital market line. Tell me what is capital market line return? Return of an asset. Return of portfolio is equal to Rf plus sigma P by sigma M into Rm minus Rf. Where we ask the premium for the entire risk. Then we saw premium should be asked only for the systematic risk. The capital market line becomes security market line. The formula becomes K is equal to Rf plus beta into Rm minus Rf. So in CAPM, they classify the risk into two types, systematic and unsystematic. Systematic risk is inherent in the market itself, which cannot be diversified away. Unsystematic risk can be diversified away. So you cannot ask a premium for unsystematic, since you can reduce it through diversification. Premium can be asked only for systematic risk. Systematic risk is measured with the help of a beta coefficient. Beta can be found out in three ways. Change in security return divided by change in market return. Standard deviation of security by standard deviation of market into correlation of security and market. Or covariance of security and market divided by standard deviation of market the whole square. So using this we find out KE. The difference between SML, KE and the CML must say return is nothing but the correlation between security and market is extra present there. Then we saw that using the SML KE, when we find out the value of an asset, we discount the asset cash flows, I'll get the value which we call as fair value or equilibrium value, compare with the actual market price, we identify overpricing or underpricing, accordingly decide whether to buy the asset or not to buy the asset. Our other way to understand underpricing or overpricing is, asset is expected to give a return at a given price, you also find the required return using the SML equation. If the expected return is more than required return, then we have to buy the asset. It gives more than what I want. Expected return less than required return, don't buy it. It gives less than what I want. Is equal to means equilibrium asset. So equilibrium asset will fall on the security market line, which is like an efficiency frontier. And if it is underpriced, it will be falling below it, under, uh, above it, and, and overpriced means not falling below the security market line. Once we completed that, we discuss about the portfolio beta. Very small concept. Beta of a portfolio is weighted beta of the individual securities. There is nothing more to it. So beta P is equal to WA beta A plus WB beta B plus WC beta C and so on. This one we discuss in portfolio beta. Can I proceed or not now? Let's complete few more sums in this particular portfolio beta. In fact, two, two more sums are pending. Once I complete that, we'll go for the levered and unlevered beta proxy beta discussion in today's class. Can I proceed now? Take question number 23. Please take question number 23. Again, today's class will do more problems and less of discussion. Levered and levered introduction may take some time, but once we cross that introduction, the problems can be done in no time. Okay, take question number 23. Mr. X is, <coughs> stop talking, Mr. X is attempting to evaluate two possible portfolios which contains the same set of five assets but in different proportions. 
he is particularly interested in using beta to compute the risk of the portfolios. So he has gathered the following information. Two portfolios A and B having the following stocks SR Shipping, Clarion, Vijaya Bank, M&M and, and BSAF. Beta of these stocks are 1.3, 0.7, 1.25, 1.1, 0.2, 0.9. In portfolio A, the proportion is 10, 30, 10, 10, 40. B, it is 30, 10, 20, 20, and 20. Calculate beta of portfolio A and portfolio B. Which portfolio is more risky? Mr. X sells SR shipping. Which portfolio is more risky? Part D you can make. This is part D. If Mr. X make it as part D. If Mr. X replaces SR shipping with Clarion, which portfolio is more risky? This is all the question which has been asked. Then ISWA final examination problem. <coughs> Nothing but simple. Just one point I just wanted to highlight. That is why this problem is being done. Can I start doing the solution together or not? Now, all of you, good morning friends. Good morning, sir. See. We are having two portfolios. Both portfolios consist of the same stock. The stock of five companies. But in what? Different proportions. Now they ask you to calculate beta of portfolio A and beta of portfolio B. Simple. What is beta of a portfolio? Beta and beta of the individual securities. Can I start doing it straight away or not? Write on first. Part A. Calculation of portfolio beta. Calculation of portfolio beta. Part A. Calculation of portfolio beta. Security beta. Proportion of A. Weighted beta of A. Proportion of B, weighted beta of B. <coughs> Two portfolios included in the same table. Can you start or not? Finish writing up. Tell me the security names. SR, Clarion, Vijaya Bank, M&M and BSAF. SR, Clarion, Vijaya Bank, M&M and, and BSAF. Tell me their betas, respective betas. I think you're not writing along with me or not. Same speed, right please. 1.3, and then 0.90. 1.3, 0 0.7, 1.25, 1.1, 1 and 0.90. <coughs> Shall I proceed or not? Next. Proportion of A. What is A proportion? 0 0.1, 0 0.30, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.40. 0 0.10, 0 0.30, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.40. Weighted beta. 1.3 into 0 0.10 gives you 0 0.13. 0 0.7 into 0 0.30, 0 0.21. 1.1 into 0 0.10, 0 0.125. I made as 0.13. You can write 0.125 in the exam, not an issue. 0 0.13. 1.1 into 0 0.1, 0 0.11. 0.9 into 0.4, 0.36, 0.36. The total portfolio beta of A, what is the A portfolio's beta? 0.94. Portfolio A beta is 0.94. Can I proceed? Proportion of B, what is B's proportion? 0 0.30, 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 
Tell me what is the weight at beta? 1.3 into 0 0.3, 0 0.39. 0.7 into 0 0.1, 0 0.07, 1.25 into 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 1.25 into 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 1.1 into 0 0.2, 0 0.22. Finally, it is 0.9 into 0 0.2, 0 0.18, 0.18. If I total it, I will be getting how much here? 1.11. The beta of portfolio B is 1.11. Now, part A question answer answering one by one. Tell me what is part A question? Calculate the betas of portfolio A and portfolio B. Have you calculated or not? Yes. Write on part B. Part B. Which portfolio is more risky? Simple and which is more risky? Yeah? B. Okay, write down. Portfolio B is more risky. Portfolio B is more risky. Since it has higher beta, <coughs> portfolio B is more risky since it has higher beta. Portfolio B is more risky since it has higher beta. Everybody respond. Are you following up? Now, next. Take the next question. Question B. Or question C here. What question C? If Mr. X sells SR, which portfolio is more risky? Now, listen here. This security, they are going to sell. They are going to sell security C. Port portfolio A and then what? Portfolio B is going to sell, suppose, SR. In that case, tell me, this 0 0.13 beta will vanish. Yes or no? And a SR is representing 10% proportion, having a beta of 1.3. The weighted beta of 0.13 vanishes for SR. Yes or no? For portfolio B, it vanishes how much? 0 0.39. And I read or not? No. When you sell SR, I get an asset called as cash. Yes or no? Nothing said now. I assume that the cash will be, that is, kept as cash. Or maybe invest in a savings bank account or a bank deposit, etc. Everybody has to know. In both cases, when SR becomes cash, when SR becomes what? Cash. What is a beta of cash? Zero. zero. You know, when something return even only beta will be coming. It's on a variability. Beta of cash, zero. Or beta of savings bank account, what I can say? Yen is also is what? Zero. Or any FD also is what? Zero. Unless they give a market security, I cannot believe that they're going to invest in any other security except for the risk for yes or cash. So, the beta of 0.13 vanishes, it goes into the asset with having a beta of what? Zero. That means the portfolio A beta becomes 0.94 minus what? 0.13. And portfolio B beta becomes what? 1.11 minus 0.39. Respond. Are you following or not? Right now. Next. Part B or part C? Or? Part C. Okay. In our slide, it is part B. So, we can just have it as part C in the notebook. Part C. Portfolio beta if SR is sold. Portfolio beta if SR is sold. Right on. When SR is sold, when SR is sold, come on. The stock becomes, the stock becomes, the stock becomes what? Cash. When SR is sold, the stock becomes cash. Hence, we are moving our funds from, hence, we are moving our funds from an asset having, hence, we are moving our funds from an asset having beta of 1.32. Hence, we are moving our funds from an asset having beta of 1.32 an asset having beta of we are moving our funds from an asset having beta of 1.32 an asset having beta of what? 0 to an asset having beta of 0 to an asset having beta of 0 everybody are you understanding this or not? no, write down beta of portfolio A is equal to Beta portfolio A is equal to, tell me what is the existing portfolio beta? 
0.94 minus 1.3 or 0.13 or 0.13. And a beta doesn't vanish. Right? That beta only what? Vanishes. It is 0.94 minus 0.13. Is it how much? 0.81. 0.94 minus 0.13, 0.81. Beta portfolio B is equal to beta portfolio B is equal to I want an answer. What minus what? 1.11 minus 0.39. 1.11 minus 0.39 is equal to 0.72. Is equal to 0.72. Question says, now which is more risky? B. In this scenario, A, okay. In this scenario, portfolio A is more risky. Write down. In this scenario, portfolio A is more risky. In this scenario, portfolio A is more risky. Portfolio A is more risky. Portfolio A is more risky. Everybody, are you following or not? No. Last part of the question. I sell SR, that is understandable, but I don't keep it idle as cash. I want use that money to buy another stock called as what? Clarion. In simple words, the portfolio in SR is replaced by what? The investment in Clarion. Can I proceed or not? No. In that case, let us discuss and then write very simple only now. 0.94 is my existing beta, right or not, part 1. In which SR goes now, 0.13 is going to vanish, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, now SR is having 1.3 beta for a 10% portfolio. So what vanishes? 0.13. Now, I can also reduce minus 0.21. I reduce what? Minus 0.21 because now the clarion proportion is going to what? Change. So, from 0.94, I reduce what? 0.13. I also reduce what? 0.21. But add, this problem becomes what? 0 0.40. In the 0 0.7 gives you what? 0.28. Plus 0.28 will give you the answer. In a correspond. Class, yes or no? Yes, Should I repeat that? Can I proceed? Yes, Can I proceed or not? Now, you tell me the calculation. Write on. Part C or part D in your notebook? Part D. Okay. Portfolio beta if SR replaced with Clarion. Portfolio beta if SR replaced with Clarion. Portfolio beta if SR replaced with Clarion. If SR replaced with Clarion. Can you start or not? Now, instead of doing it here, I'll put the previous slide. You tell and write. Okay. Beta of portfolio A is equal to, everybody I want to participate and write, beta of portfolio A is equal to, beta of portfolio A is equal to, for the original beta, 0 0.94, 0 0.94. Is this 0 0.13 continuing or? No, minus 0 0.13, minus 0.13. Is this 0 0.21 correct or wrong or? Wrong, minus 0 0.21, minus 0 0.21. It will be replaced with what? New clarion beta, no, it is what? Minus as a plus one point two eight. How I got point two eight? Point four into point seven plus point two eight. Point in bracket right point four into point seven. Point four into point seven. I hope everybody understanding it or not. Now please tell me the number here. What is I'm going to get? <coughs> point eight eight is equal to point eight eight. Beta of portfolio A is equal to point eight eight. Accept or not? Next. Beta of portfolio B. Beta of portfolio B. Beta of portfolio B. Everybody help me out. Say what happens here? 1.11. Original beta is 1.11. Minus 0.39. Minus 0.39. Please. Minus 0.39. Minus what? 0 0.07. Minus 0 0.07. Now this also becomes 0.4 or not? 0.4 into 0 0.7 gives you what? Plus 0.28. So 1.11 minus 0.39 minus 0 0.07 plus 0.28. Tell me what is the beta of the portfolio B? 0 0.93. Portfolio B beta is 0 0.93. It becomes 0 0.93. Respond. Having the clarity or not? With this we complete the solution to question number 3. Only thing which I want to say is if the asset is sold, not invested elsewhere, the risk reduces because I am having the money in cash. So the risk is going to reduce. Okay, now.
Take question number 24, please. Shh. A pass examination question. Take question number 24. This is the last sum in portfolio beta. Take question number 24. Stop talking, please. P limited has an expected return of 22%. P limited has an expected return of 22%, standard deviation of 40%. Q limited has an expected return of 24%, standard deviation of 38%. P has a beta of 0.86, Q 1.24. Correlation between the security P and Q is 0.72. Standard deviation of market return is 20%. He is investing in Q better than investing in P. First question. If you invest 30% in Q and 70% in P, what is your expected rate of return and the portfolio standard deviation? See, what is the market portfolio's expected rate of return and how much is the risk-free rate? What is the beta of the portfolio if P is weighty 70%? And Q's weight is 30%. That's the question which has been given. I'll just give you two minutes time. Go through the question. See how to answer it. Before you start with the solution. Read the question for the facts first quickly. Ready in the question, huh? Yeah. <coughs> I am awake. Yeah. Can you see? Now, <laughs> let's start with question number 24. See, this problem is question on Markowitz as well as what? Yes, someone. In both, they ask the question. Can you start or not? Now, let's write the facts first. Write down facts. Question number 24. What are two securities? P and then Q. Two securities are P and Q. Let's write one by one. The expected return. What is the expected return of P and Q? Tell me the numbers here. How much percentage? How much percentage? 22 percentage. And then 24 percentage. 22 percentage. 24 percentage is the expected return of P and Q. Right or not? Next. Standard deviation. What is standard deviation of P and Q? 40 percentage and 38 percentage. Beta. What is beta of P and Q? 0 0.86 1.24 0 0.86 and 1.24 Other details given here are Correlation of P and Q. What is correlation of P and Q given? 0 0.72. Correlation is 0 0.72. And last item is they given what is 20%? Tell me what is 20%? Standard, Standard deviation of market. Is how much percentage here? 20%. This is all the details given. Can I proceed or not? No. Now the first two question is let's answer one by one. Is investing in Q better than investing in P? Okay, now, we are now in Markowitz. Tell me, P gives 22% return for what rest? 
Q gives 22, 24% rhythm for how much less? 38%. Tell me, is Q efficient or not? Yes. You know, Q gives a higher return for a lower rest. It lies in the mark of its efficiency frontier. Right or not? Right now. First, part A. Part A. Q is efficient than P. Q is efficient than P since it gives Q is efficient than P since it gives fill the blank since it gives what? Higher return for a lower risk. Since it gives higher return for a lower risk. Since it gives higher return for a lower risk. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? No. Don't now measure the risk with the beta because the question is asked in what sense? Markowitz. And in beta, we don't compare two securities. We always compare securities with what? Market identify underpricing or overpricing. Everybody, I think you are all understanding it or not. So, this is not a sharp per se problem. It is what? Markowitz. Hence, we use the standard deviation as a measure of this first part. Can you present or not? Next. Part B. What is part B? If you invest 30% in Q and 70% in P, what is an expected rate of return and portfolio? Standard deviation. Can I put it or not? No. Right on. Part B. What is the expected return of a portfolio? Weighted average return. Can I put it or not? Right on. Part B. Portfolio return. Part B. Portfolio return. Can you start? Tell me. What are the columns? Security, proportion, return and weighted return. Security, proportion, return and weighted return. Tell me the two securities, P and then Q. Be careful. Examination that just given it in opposite way. Okay or not? Now, what is P? How much percent? 70 percent. Be careful. Proportion of P is 70 percent. And Q proportion is 30%. P is 70%, Q is 30%. What is the return of P and Q? 22. And then what? 24. Return is 22% and 22, 24%. 0.7 into 22, I want a number. What is the number? 15.4. 15 15 15 15 24 into 0.3 gives you 7.2. RT, return of portfolio is equal to how much? 22.6 percentage. The return of portfolio is equal to 22.6 percentage. 22.6 percentage. Respond, is or no? Now, now to go for the portfolio risk. Here, once again, we are meaning the mark of it. What is the risk of a portfolio? W1 square sigma P square. The formula should be used or not? Write down. Next. Portfolio standard deviation. Give the ending. Portfolio standard deviation. Portfolio standard deviation. Portfolio standard deviation. So please don't write sigma p. And a p is also a security. Write an order. So you can just write fully sigma port. Standard deviation of a portfolio. Sigma of portfolio. Standard deviation of portfolio is equal to. I want the formula. W1 square, sigma P square, P in a security, P, plus what? W2 square, sigma Q square, plus 2W1, W2, sigma P, sigma Q, correlation of P and Q. I have to take what? Square root. You take the square root. That gives you the portfolio standard deviation. Right or not? No. Substitute the numbers, please. W1 square. What is the proportion of P squared here? 0. 0.7 square. 0. 0.7 square into. What is the standard deviation of P? 40 square. No, right or not? My number. Next. Q is what? 0. 0.3 square. Into what is sigma Q square? 38 square. Plus 2 into. W1 is what? 0. 0.7 into. 0.3 into 40 into 38 into what is correlation point 72 into 38 into 0.72 38 into 0.72 I hope you are able to understand or not now 
If I simplify it, I'll be getting the answer now. What is the answer here? Somebody do and tell me, yeah? 0.7 square into 40 square plus 0.3 square into 38 square plus 2, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 40, 38, 0.72. Somebody do and tell me the answer. I don't have the stride, unfortunately. You do and tell me. What is the number? 30? 37.06. So the standard is about 47.06. Yeah, correct, huh? Do you do it or not? No. Wow, some number. Okay. 37.05 yeah, 06. Any number? Yeah, can I proceed? No. Shh. Stop that. So this is a standard deviation of a portfolio. Accept or not? No. So. First part and second part of question is over. First part of question is what? Is investing in Q better than P? He said yes, because Q gives a higher return for lower risk. Second part, ask you to find out a portfolio consisting of 30% Q, 70% P. Ask whether the return and standard deviation has been found out. Exam question testing on first part, Markowitz. Can I it or not? Now, next is. Now, they ask you to find out two things. RF and then RF. Stop talking, please. They ask you to find out, look at the question. The question is, what is the market portfolio's expected rate of return and how much is the risk-free rate? What is the other name for market portfolio and expected rate of return? RM. And what is risk-free return? RF. The question asks you to find out RM and then what? RM. Respond, can I proceed or not? No. See. Only with the assumption the question can be answered. No other option is there. Okay. Assumption is they give you expected return of 22%, 24%. Yes or no? Yes, sir. We'll assume that to be the SML return also. Yes, sir. No, no, tell me the other option to find out. Yeah, okay. So they are given you what? Expanded return. I assume to be what? Uh, SML return. In other words, I can say security P and Q are properly priced. Or what? Properly priced. It is neither underpriced nor what? Overpriced. Perfectly priced, we can assume. We can assume that the market return is same as what? Required return. That is 22% is SML return for P and 24% is what? SML return for Q. Based on that, we can go for the further discussion. Respond. Yes or no? Write down. Next. Part B or part C or D or? Part C. Write down. Part C. Calculation of. Part C. Calculation of. RM and RF. Calculation of RM and then RF. Calculation of RM and RF. Written on market portfolio and then what? Risk free asset. That is what the question asked you. Right or not? Right on. It is assumed that it is assumed that both the securities are properly priced in the market. It is assumed that both the securities are properly priced in the market. Hence, hence, the required return is equal to and the required return is equal to what? The expected return. That is, SML return is equal to expected return. That is, SML return is equal to expected return. SML return is equal to expected return. Can we proceed doing the sum or not? No, let's do it together. First, Security P, before that write the equation or the equation, KE is equal to, all of you, KE is equal to what? R plus beta into RM minus R, RF. Okay. KE is equal to R plus beta into RM minus RF. Let's start putting numbers or not. Tell me. Security P, security B, what is the expected KE? What is the required return? How much percentage? 22. 22 is equal to... 22% return for security B or not? 22 is equal to understanding and writing. Yes, 
No, class today, I am not comfortable here. Are you falling or not? No. 22 is equal to R of, we don't know, plus. What is beta of the security P? Tell me how many days. 0.86 into Rm minus Rm. This is equation number 1. This is equation number 1. Can I proceed? Next. Security B, what is the expected return? 24 is equal to R of plus, R of plus. What is B term? 1.4 into 1.2. 1.24 into Rm minus Rf. This is equation number 2. Equation number 2. Everybody is or no? No. I just do 1 minus 2. We will do equation 1 minus equation 2. Upper 22 minus 24 is what? Minus 2. Is equal to Rf and Rf gets what? Cancel. What is 0 0.86 minus 1.24? I want a number. What is the number? Minus point? Three. Minus point three eight. What? Rm minus Rf. Minus point three eight. Rm minus Rf plus one. Yes or no? No. That means Rm minus Rf. You know, because risk premium they want, no? Rm minus Rf is equal to what minus? What divided by what? Minus two by minus point three eight. Is how much here? Five point? Rm minus Rf is equal to 5.26. That is the market risk premium is how much here? 5.26. Respond is or no? No. In that case, same. I know Rm minus Rf. I know what? Beta. Can I find out K here? In this? Can, can't I find out Rf or not? Write down. Next. Rf is equal to, we can substitute in any one of the equation. Rf is equal to, can I go to the first equation or not? 22 minus, it comes this side, one to minus what? 0.86 into 5.26. R of is equal to 22 minus 0.86 into 5.26. I hope you are understanding and writing or not. Tell me. What is R of here? 17.4. Four number. 17.48. R of is equal to 17.48. R of is equal to 17.48. Up Rm is equal to 17.48 plus 5.26. Yes or no? Rm is equal to 17.48 plus. Because Rm minus Rf is equal to 5.26. Rm is equal to Rf plus 5.26. 17.48 plus what? 5.26. Rm is equal to 17.48 plus 5.26. Yes, how much here? 22.74 percentage. The return on market portfolio is 22.74 percentage. 22.74 percentage. Now we have found out Rm as well as what? Rf. Rf is how much here? 5.26. And this is the Rf is 17.48. And Rm is 22.74. 5.26 market risk premium. Write down. The return on market portfolio is... The return on market portfolio is 22.74. The return on market portfolio is 22.74. Come on. The risk free return is the risk free return is 17.58. 17.48. The risk free return is 17.48 and the market risk premium is and the market risk premium is 5.26 and the market risk premium is 5.26 market risk premium is 5.26 everybody understood or not but in this answer the assumption is what uh, sml ke and the expected ke are what same there is a return falls in the sml efficiency frontier the share is efficiently priced is what we are going to assume here for doing this sum everybody can i proceed or not now the last part of the question is for the last part of the question tell me what is the beta of the portfolio tell me what is the portfolio beta weighted average beta of the individual securities can i proceed right now next part d Portfolio beta. Part D. Portfolio beta.
portfolio beta. What are all the columns you can have in? Security, proportion, beta, and weighted beta. Security, proportion, beta, and weighted beta. Tell me the two securities, P and then Q. What are the proportion given? 0.7 and then 0 0.30. Beta of P, I think, is 0.86, huh? 0.86. Q beta is? 1.24 point 7 into point 86 is how much am 0 point 60 okay point 602 point 3 into 1.24 point 372 total what is beta p point 974 the portfolio beta is point 974 portfolio beta is point 974 now respond is or no let typical exam sums tell me difficult or easier see nothing but they tested one one aspect of everything in this problem they tested whether you able to identify efficient portfolio what is efficient portfolio any portfolio it does not have any other portfolio which gives a higher return for Lower risk, higher return for same risk, or same return for lower risk. So the question in the part A of this question, right or not? Part B of the question, they ask you to calculate portfolio standard deviation and portfolio return. The risk return profile has been tested here, right or not? Part C, the tested on SML equation, K is equal to what? RF plus beta into RF minus RF. Fourth part is about the portfolio beta, okay? Even though we discuss great things, the question is what? Very simple. The tested on each and every aspect, one one part. Is one of the exam question for six marks. Tell me, worth or not worth? For me and all, the six marks is not worth. Very simple question only. But only thing is to have a thorough understanding of the full chapter. Can I proceed? No, please. Shh. Stop talking. See, to be frank, for us, every question will look simple because so much we have discussed. You understand what? We discuss everything with background. Always I say, Shh. if no background has been discussed, have you gone through study material? Huh? Open and see, you will never feel like reading. Okay, because study material, they don't classify. First, just return. Then what? Markovitz, CML, SML, how it changes. Nothing will be given. Suppose you read the chapter. In very say, unstructured way, if you read the question, you will not be able to figure out what the question is all about. Yes or no? Ultimately, the answer is simple. Only requirement is what? You know the background of each and every number which has been asked. When you further go, I'll say, there are so many lines. That is CAL. We did question number 10 and 11 in the workbook. CAL problem. Yes or no? There is CML. There is SML. Right? We are going to see another CML, characteristic market line in sharp single index. Yes or no? No. Unless we show the differences and discuss elaborately, when a question is asked, we cannot understand whether the facts requires us to use SML or CML, CAL. And you also get confused, sir, for same KE, so many formulas. Answer. So, what are you KE? Having what? So, which is right, which is wrong? We are just showing the differences to understand the background in which each and everything is calculated. If you know all this pakka, these sums are very easy and simple to do the entire chapter. The background discussion is only important. It helps us understand the remaining part of the solution. Can I proceed now? Next, the last CAPM discussion is levered and unlevered beta. Give the heading. Levered beta versus unlevered beta. I will have a little bit long introduction, then we can have a notes in this regard, then we can just start doing the problems. One that is over, 8 to 9 problems can be done in trot without any further discussion mostly required. Okay, please, Shh. stop talking. 
Shall I proceed? Now. Levered beta and unlevered beta. Stop talking. Shall I start? Uh? See. We all know that beta represents risk. Beta represents risk. When the market changes, when the market return changes, how much will a given security return changes is what we call as the beta. We are going to analyze more deeply about this risk concept in this area called as levered beta and then unlevered beta. An IPCC portion will be revisited now. The chapter called as leverages. Okay. That will be linking to beta for our discussion. Can I proceed now? Okay. No need to write anything. Everything I'll dictate later. Okay. Risk of a company is broadly classified into two types. One is business risk, another is what? Financial risk. Business risk and then what? Financial risk. Are the two types of risk any company has. Okay. Now, business risk comes from two angles. One is the nature of product or services offered by the company. Number two is the cost structure of the company. When it comes to financial risk, it comes from use of debt. And simply call this due to capital structure of the company, the financial risk comes. Okay. Now, let us have some more discussion about this before I take the discussion to the next stage. Okay. Now, leave financial risk. Let's start with the business risk first. Okay. What do you mean by risk? What do you mean by risk here? Variability in return, we call as what? Risk. Okay. Now, if you look at the company's profit and loss account, which only shows us a return or not, we call it also as income statement, it looks as follows. That is sales. That is what cost? Variable cost. Then what you get is what? Contribution. That is something called as fixed cost. What they call as what? I call as EBAT. EBAT is called as operating profit or the profit from the operations. You have cash, from, cash flow from operations, you have fund from operations, I call as, call as what? Profit from operations. Okay. From this, suppose I have interest. I pay what? Interest. What you get is what? Profit before tax. Minus what? Tax. You see what? Profit after tax. If you want to pay number of shares, I'll be getting what? EPS of the company. Okay. This is going to be the income statement of a company. The variability in EPS only we, we call us want a risk of the share. Now, return of the share is there or not? Now. So, the risk of the company is a variability of the EPS. Okay. Now, when the market changes, how it affects the company is a subject matter of discussion. It's called as what? Beta. We discuss about what risk? Systematic risk here. Right or not? See. Suppose in the market, there is a general recession that is taking place. The GDP growth is not so great. The GDP growth is what? Less. Everywhere, entire market is hit by recession, lack of demand, etc. It may be due to various reasons also, government policy or lack of monsoon, anything may happen, but there is a general recession prevailing in the market, entire market. Everybody following up? Now, when the market is there in recession, our company sales will increase or decrease? Um, decrease. Okay. Recession affects what? Everybody. The company sales decrease. Respond. It's all no. Now, 
this risk is due to company's performance, uh, overall market performance, uh, overall market performance. Because we are inside the market only. When the entire market is dull, our business also is bound to be what? Dull only. We cannot uh, overcome the market and do the business mostly. Everybody has all known. So, there is a systematic risk. The sales drop may be due to the market recession. Some simple example. Response is all known. Now, how much my business gets affected changes from business to business. Market is done now. All businesses need not be having the same impact. Some may be severely affected and some may be able to want sustain it. It all depends on the nature of my product or service. Point number one. It's all known. The first two businesses case what? Mainly the nature of product and services. Broadly we can say products can be classified into two types. Some products which are discretionary and some products which are essential. It's all known. The two types of product, discretionary and then what? Essential. Okay. Essential goods, the company engaged in what? Essential product and services may not be so much affected by recession. May not be what? So much affected by recession. Because in a, even in recession, people are required to what? Buy that product or avail that services. Respond yes or no. For example, child accountant services, suppose a person is having an audit, has what a tax audit, so many cases, yeah, okay. Because of recession, tax audit case will not reduce. Now that recession makes what? Every company go below tax audit. So tax audit case will not what? Reduce because the statutory requirement is not no. Yeah, real fun what I am saying. Now, in such cases, some services may be what uh, essential and number of most uh, number of goods also become what essential. Even during recession, people buy what uh, some services. If there are some goods and what some services. So those companies whose products are essential are not going to be so much affected through what uh, the market changes. The systematic risk is less. Are you what I am saying? But discretionary goods, people buy when they are prosperous, people don't buy when they are not having so much money in the hand. If the money circulation is not so great, they'll postpone what? The consumption or the use of what? The discretionary goods. Everybody has saw no. One simple example is housing. Always people think of buying a own house only when the employment is secured. Employment out of the bar. Any, any day they will be showing you what the card and sending out means. Then you won't go for a loan. You don't buy what a house. Don't commit for a EMI because you don't know tomorrow whether you will be getting my salary for what purchasing the provision is sell. I don't go and buy a house. Are you following what I am saying? So people will start purchasing for example in construction sector. People start purchasing what? Housing. Only when the economy is prosperous. Yes or no? Similarly, construction also, infrastructure, etc. Most company goes for new projects only when they have new demand. Yes or no? So, new project, new plant, etc. will be constructed only when there is going to be what? A boom in economy. An example of a yeah, sector having high beta is a construction sector and there is automobile. Remember, it or not? So, automobile as well as what construction sector is highly hit by what the market variation. So, if the product is very discretionary, then it will be having a high beta, high businesses. If the product is what less discretionary, the beta will be what low. Again, I am speaking about systematic risk, not the company specific risk. Are you following what I am saying? So, this is the first risk called as what first businesses, the nature of product or services. In the product or not. Now, for example, I am having a discretionary product. My sales will fluctuate very widely with the market performance. Got it when the market performs well, my sales is going to want to shoot up very much. When the market does not perform well, my sales is going to want to drop very much. The variability of my sales will be more than the variability of the market performance. Respond, it's all no. For which goods? Discretionary yes. goods. For the essential goods, it will always be stable. That is, people don't overconsume. Now they want to underconsume. Now all becomes want to stable. So sales is affected by the market. This is the nature of product or services. In the product or not? Now, see, market is down by 10%. Market is down by what? 10%. My company is more riskier than market. Suppose it is 1.5. It is having what? A beta for sales beta is what? 1.5. That is the market sales drops by 10%. My sales drop by what? 15%. Tell me my sales is going to drop by how much percentage? 15%. Point number one. It's yes or no. When sales drops, profit also decreases. It's yes or no. What profit here? EBAT is going to decrease. Yes or no? Now, in that case, if a company is running its business with a cost structure which is variable cost dominated 
then the sales drops, cost also can be seen. Get up. And if the variable cost dominated business means when the sales drops, the cost also can be saved. Suppose no fixer car, then the profit also drops by 15 percent. Yes or no? Suppose the business is in such a way that the fixer component is what huge compared to what variable component. Then with the sales drops by 15 percent, the EBIT drop will be 15 percent less than 15 or more than 15 or more than 15, which we discuss as operating leverage in IPCC. Right or not? Any client did So, see the link when the market drops by 10%, my sales drop by how much percent? 15%. When the sales drops by 15%, the operating profit may drop by more than 15%. If the business is loaded with what? Uh, fixed car. It can be other way around also. The sales increases by what? 10%. The company sales may increase by 15%. The EBA may increase more than what? Sales because fixed cars will not change. Yes or no? That means my risk is first dependent upon the nature of my product and service. Not only that, how the product and services are produced and rendered, that should be a cost structure or not. If my cost structure is loaded with what? Fixed cost, the risk gets magnified. The risk gets what? Uh, magnified. Point number two. Everybody follow or not? Now, all this only I call as what risk? Business risk. We call as business risk. Everybody can I proceed or not? Now, see. Now, next issue is, to do the business, I require money. Uh. I can fund the money through equity or what uh, debt. Okay. Now, if I fund the money through equity, it is not an issue because when the return drops, they are also going to have what uh, lesser dividends. The return increases, they are going to have what more dividends. But if I fund the money through what uh, debt, when the return drops, EBAT drops, will they compromise the interest or not? No. They ask you for what same interest. In that case, the effect on EPS will be much more severe. Yes or no? So, when you use debt in the capital structure, due to the non-flexibility of debt, the debt cannot say, since you are earning a less profit, I'll compromise on interest. You won't say, the drop in profit should be fully caused, borne only by what? Equity shareholder. In the case, the shareholder is further increased because they not only have to contend with the drop in profit, they also have to pay what? Constant interest out of their pocket. Respond, it's all known. But the advantage is when the EBT increases, they cannot ask what more interest. The EPS increases further. Respond, it's all known. In other words, the EPS volatility is further magnified by having what uh, the debt in the capital sector is called as financial risk in the analysis of risk of a company. Respond, it's all known. So tell me, risk of a company can be classified into two types. One is what? Business risk. One is called as what? Financial risk. Business risk, uh, the, all the risk, I only say about what risk? Systematic risk. When the market changes, when the market return changes, when the market does not perform well, whether my sales will increase or decrease, all depends on what? The product or service. Discretionary means I will be hit worse and uh, essential goods means I will uh, be more or less stable. It all depends on my nature and product or service. Okay. Then apart from the needs of product or service, how I produce and sell them is also important. Is my cost structure loaded with fixed cost or not? Is loaded with fixed cost. This risk is further magnified using what? Fixed cost in the cost structure. Yes or no? Now, this is what I call as what risk here? Yeah? Business risk. When sales changes, how much my EBAT changes is called as business risk. Yes or no? Now, I am not saying the risk of the company. I am going to say the risk of the shareholders ultimately. Yes or no? In that case, when EBAT EBAT changes, EPS will change, yes or no? But when EBAT increases, EPS increase. When EBAT decreases, EPS decrease. But will it be at the same rate or different rate? Depends on your capital structure, yes or no? If my capital is loaded with debt, then I'm going to have a huge interest cost. Where the say, EBAT drops, still I have to pay what? Same interest. The EPS percentage drop will be more than what? The EBAT drop, which we call as financial leverage. In the parita so this is about the risk of the company. Can I use it? So my beta of a company is influenced by all these factors. The beta company is going to be influenced by what? All these factors. Can I move to the next stage of discussion or not? No. See. Okay. Beta is the, let us calculate, classify this beta into two types. One is, beta of the asset and this beta of the securities. I will explain this. This is called as asset beta. They call as beta A. Means what? Asset beta. I will call this as source beta. Okay. 
beta of security this is destination this one is one destination beta there are two types of securities in the company namely what debt and then equity that is the beta for debt debt beta then there is a beta for equity which is equal as what equity beta which further classified into two types levered beta and unlevered beta don't worry all this will be explained simple issue only okay all the terms will be used here and there you don't know where it is used or not hence we are discussing this now beta represents what risk beta can be classified into two types asset securities asset beta is called as source beta beta of security is called as what destination beta and the securities can be classified into two types debt and equity there is a beta for debt security and the beta for equity share if further classified into what levered beta and then unlevered beta that's what is or no now first of all this debt beta will be assumed as zero debt beta is what zero whatever happens they receive what the same interest what happens they go to see what a same interest generally in real world debt beta need not be zero because as a bond holder when the interest rate in the market changes the bond prices changes in the bar you are going to have what some capital gain or capital loss also for that only people go for immunization strategy etc no 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 is a one of a type of hedging strategy right or not you need to have, have to stand protected but normally the change is very less is what people understand for all the conceptual discussion even though debt beta may be that a small beta may be that for what a debt due to the market interest rate change for all our discussion assume the debt beta to be what a zero because whatever happens in market they receive what a same agreed interest so we can say debt beta is what zero on that basis only the discussion is going to be built around in a right or not now before i proceed tell me beta can be classified into how many times Tunga, how many times here? Yeah? Two times. What two times are beta? Asset beta, security beta. Asset beta is called as what? Source beta. Security beta is called as what? Destination beta. Security beta is first class range to dead beta, equity beta. Equity beta first class range to levered beta and then unlevered beta. Can I proceed or not? No. I will explain this with the help of a small number so that you will be able to understand it. With that, I'll also put a formula they say linking levered beta and unlevered beta. Can I proceed or not? No. We can just discuss this with the help of an example. Okay, see. Can I proceed or not? No. This means what? Balance sheet. Not a joke, yeah. There are some present. Debt T equal to ratio there. Debt, yeah. B means what? Borrowing. S means what? Shareholders. When we have the notation, what do you want to say? Balance sheet. This is a, suppose a balance sheet of an unlevered company. Balance sheet of what? Unlevered company. We have two sources of finance, equity and then what? Debt. Unlevered company, what is the proportion of equity? One. What is the proportion of debt? Zero. Okay. Now, first of all, the source of risk is businesses. From businesses only, financialists will come. If businesses itself is not at all there, there is no one to be want, uh, no financialist. Because understand that EPS varies only because EBIT varies. If EBIT does not vary, EPS will not vary. Please respond. Yes or no? So, all the rest, the basis is only what uh, businesses. The business depends on two reasons. One is what? Names of product or services or how much your cost structure is loaded with the fixed car. It's a way of conducting the business also. So businesses only gives you what? The financial risk. Respond. Are you following or not? Now, 
the business risk only i call as asset beta i call as what beta yeah? asset beta okay now i say beta of asset is 1.2 times i just write beta of asset is how many times yeah 1.2 times the meaning is when the market varies by 1% the market varies by how much percentage yeah 1% my ebat the meaning is what my ebat varies by how much percentage yeah 1.2 percent that is my company is going to react 1.2 percent to what the market everybody follow what i'm saying idam vikala sir asset beta respond is on no now see who is having the stake in the asset debt and equity okay the the return very simple as discuss the business in the dividend policy or not what is business here yeah? i get the money from equity and debt i invest the money in what asset the asset generates what return the return will be shared by what equity and debt either business is or no so how the return will be shared the response will be what uh, shared based on the agreed amount in a parade or not now see in an all equity company the entire risk belongs to what uh, shareholders and it belongs to what uh, shareholders that means the beta is also going to be what 1.2 1 into 1 point you see what 1.2 and this is going to be zero in a parade or not now this is an unlevered company the balance sheet to to should total correctly yes or no how the asset side should total be liability side risk of asset should be equal to what risk of liability it should be 1.2 1.2 respond is or no now see this is a simple one let us develop this into a levered company into what company levered company balance sheet of a levered company can i proceed up now look at this we have liability side namely proportion beta and weighted beta then we have what as an end one beta okay now the two sources equity and then debt and proportion of equity suppose it is 0.5 and debt is what 0.5 i just borrow 50% and have what 50% own money so this is a levered unlevered lever the company has borrowed respond is on no now the question is just because i borrowed will my asset beta change you know the ebat chain does not uh, depend upon how you are financing a business it depends on your sales fixed cost and the market movement is or no ebat how much ebat chain depends on what is the gdp of the country and how it is affecting my sales and what is my fixed cost only influences ebat ebat is not going to be influenced by whether i finance my business through equity or what uh, debt so for the levered company and unlevered company same company irrespective of the capital structure what should be same asset beta should be same so i can say beta of asset is equal to what uh, 1.2 we also like what uh, 1.2 this is a question so no now that means my profit is going to vary how many times uh, 1.2 times the market my return is having a volatility of 1.2 times my risk is 1.2 respond is or no now return will be shared by debt and equity get up debt takes interest equity takes what uh, dividend it is shared by return as a debt and equity return not now the risk will be shared by debt and equity true or false for because the debt says whatever may be the profit variability give me the same interest he will not take part in risk he said i want return i will not take part in what risk that is why you give him low return are you following that means this 1.2 will not be shared by equity and debt should be shared only by what equity alone in that case now let us see what is the beat of debt uh, zero why zero he will not take part in the risk so the beta is what zero so the weighted beta is what zero now total the balance sheet 1.2 1.2 what should be the weight weighted beta 1.2 then what should be beta of equity m 2.4 respond is or no in a clarity huh? now see in an unlevered company the shareholder risk is only what 1.2 in a levered company it becomes what 2.4 because here for the full capital the risk is what 1.2 the full capital risk has to bear by what 50 percent because he has to bear his risk as much as the risk of the other party also in that case the risk becomes what 2.4 this i call as unlevered beta this i call as what levered beta if you are a shareholder of an unlevered company your risk is what 1.2 in the same company is what levered whereas becomes what 2.4 because here i have only the businesses to contend with i'm having what business as well as what financial risk in the parade or not yes or no now in both case the source of the risk is businesses the source of the risk is what asset beta asset beta is called what source beta 
this asan beta who is having the risk question is no first the business is having the risk of 1.2 the asan gives a risk to business okay the business gives a risk to what businessman is or no who is the businessman here shareholder in a part or not in that case the the what is say sales and ebat gives you what asset beta the asset beta will be borne by what the equity shareholders not by what depends the holder so if it is an all equity company they have to contend only with what is the businesses if the company with debt the shareholder has to bear the business as well as what the, the financial risk so the asset beta becomes what security beta because the beta that should be given to security debt security is zero beta and the balance should be taken by the equity security is called as levered beta and leave it be the discussion everybody following on uh, now come back to the chart okay now source beta is what asset beta will it change between a levered company and levered company no whether you are levered or unlevered if you do the same business and have the same cost structure your business should be what same am i correct huh? you are doing the same business and same cost structure business should be what same but the shareholder risk depends not only on the business risk it all depends on what the funding of the company okay now i can be a shareholder of two types of company a shareholder of an all equity company a shareholder of what company which has debt if i am a shareholder of all equity company my beta is called as what unlevered beta with the same as asset beta correct ba you know my risk is only what is businesses the shareholder of company which has borrowed my beta is called as what levered beta which should be more than the unlevered beta or not yes and the beta of the debt is what a zero beta whatever happens to businesses they don't take part in what businesses they always want a constant interest everybody are you understanding relationship or not in this we should have a relationship between the levered beta and unlevered beta is or no otherwise two companies alike in all aspects alike in what all aspects they both do the same business they do the same business they have the same cost structure same way of finance uh, spending the money to produce a product or render the services everything is same only difference is what one is all equity another is what having a debt in that case there should be a relation between levered beta and unlevered beta or not that is what is going to be the next discussion any apurjida yes or no now let's go for the last item levered beta and unlevered beta now for your sake i'll write this once again liability proportion beta weighted beta and asset and then what beta can i pose it this will be the balance sheet of a company we have what equity debt okay now just for sake of more understanding i can make the proportion as 0.6 0.4 now 0.5 you may not be able to understand the difference 0.6 and then what 0.4 now let's take asset beta it is how much here 1.2 levered unlevered company here levered company the total is what 1.2 And this is going to be one zero, and this is one one point two. One point two. If I'm saying this, you want two times. Okay, this is, this is called as one beta, levered beta. This one point two can be called as unlevered beta or not? Because asset beta, unlevered beta, are one same only always. Can I be sure or not? Now, see the relationship. Beta levered is equal to beta unlevered into Debt plus equity divided by equity. This is formula. Beta levered is equal to what? Beta unlevered into debt plus equity divided by equity. Very simple. What is beta unlevered? One point two. Now, what about because asset beta is equal to what? Unlevered. If you are an all equity company, your only risk is what? The business, the source risk only is going to be what? Destination risk also. It becomes one point two. So no. So the unlevered beta is what? One point two into what is that? What is equity? Point four plus point six divided by what is equity? 
1.6 enna paraid anna tell me it is going to be 1.2 into 1 divided by 0.6 is how many times here two times it is called as levered beta enna paraid anna tell me the formula levered beta is equal to what unlevered beta into dead plus equity divided by equity i think you are all following or not now very simple here yeah? this 1.2 should have been shared by what dead plus equity which i make them share only by what equity the beta gets boosted are you following what i am saying now next tell me the reverse formula unlevered beta is equal to unlevered beta is equal to what levered beta into equity by dead plus equity the first formula everybody following now now next is when you have taxation when you have what taxation what happens very simple the formula is beta lever is equal to what will be a formula unlevered beta into d into 1 minus c that is having a tax sheet or not plus what equity divided by equity everybody following or if the question gives you taxation it is d into 1 minus t after tax value of debt is on d into 1 minus t plus equity divided by equity and what is a unlevered beta beta unlevered is equal to what beta divided into equity by d into 1 minus t plus equity is a relationship between levered beta and unlevered beta different books rearrange the formula in different ways all formulas will lead us only to this particular formula everybody following or not now so this is a relation between levered beta and unlevered beta why we should study this will be the next issue are you following or not with that we will complete the introduction part and then we can just start doing the problems okay now thank you friends ओम साई भोजन पाली